Oh, let's see here. Play that funky music, white boy. Wait a second, why am I hearing this? Oh, hello everyone. I forgot I was on. I always have issues in remembering when I hit that start button. Hello, I am the one, the only, and wow, this is a short line. I have to remember that. I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom, and I'm here with one purpose only. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. Um, this is probably going to be a fairly quick show because it's only one show for a change. Actually, wait, did I do that in two shows? Wait, what did I do Monday? Oh, uh, Smack, oh, uh, Raw's just long. That's a whole different. This is AEW, folks. Let me look at my calendar. So, oh, last thing I have to do tonight. I'm done. Yes, yes, yes. I'm here to talk about some AEW wrestling, also known as the Cruise of Jericho. Drink it all in, baby. Bring me some of the bubbly. Because this was, I, I'll tell you what, I was amazed. Minus one match, this show was amazing. Like, I don't know why. I don't know, it's just tag team wrestling's amazing. But before I get to that, I have some shout outs to give. Let's see here. Baron, you sir on the Discord. Thank you very much for chatting with me. You sir have earned a six count. Joey's life. You, sir, are now that luchador on a forklift.
Let's see here. I know I wrote this down. G. Piaton. You, sir, are a master. The air guitar and air drums. And Nikki McDermott, you always seem to win by dirty pin. That's uh, that's everything. Again, if you like to, I think if you leave a comment. I do check my emails every so often, not as often as I should. I don't know. Like I have my one main email account, which which is my ultra secret email account. I have my business email account here at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. And I check that every so often. Generally the only thing that shows up there and most of the time is bad. So I just don't check it that often. Like once a month I'll be like, so see how many copyright spikes I have. Or 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 how many newsletters have I missed? That's okay. I can live with that. Um, again, you can leave a comment for YouTube, email, like, share, comment, and subscribe. You know, it's always a good ways to support the one, the only Hobo Tom, the true hobo of Daytona Beach. But now it's not to talk about me. It's not to talk about boats, cruise boats, wrestling on a cruise boat. Yes. Yes, yes. Even though I would never go on a cruise boat because I have heard odd things about cruise boats. Sometimes the plumbing doesn't work. Not a good thing. It's a closed environment, so people tend to spread viruses very quickly. Not a good thing. Then you have viruses and sewage problems. Terrible. Although the food tends to be really good, there are certain outbreaks of food poisoning. And you can't go fishing off a cruise boat. And I think my grandparents had a they had a horrible time on a cruise. I think my Aunt Rose passed away. And they were on a cruise because my grandfather wanted to see the Pacific Ocean. I think he saw the Pacific Ocean, but that was it, though. Because and the only reason he saw the Pacific Ocean... Is because the cruise boat was notified. They had to take a skimmer. I think they were still in the, the port of Costa Rica. They had to take some like sketchy taxi cab driver that like stopped everyone and said, Look at this beautiful view. You can see both oceans. And my grandparents are like, Oh my God, we're going to die in this country. And they had a police escort to their airplane because they did not have passports. Because they weren't going to get off the boat. The cruise boat was supposed to go through the Panama Canal. Nope, never had a chance. Um, I think other stories and food poisoning. They're expensive too, especially if you want to drink. And like the only thing on a cruise boat I would do, I lose money gambling, drink and get fat. And then like just, well, drink and eat by the pool. Yeah, so that's terrible. I don't know. Cruises just 
I can't fish off a boat, I don't want to be on said boat. I want to be able to fish off of it. Number one part, number one thing I always look for in a boat is its fishability. I don't care what kind of speakers it has. I don't care the amenities. How how wide is the transom from the cockpit of the boat to the true transom, the true stern of the boat? Only thing I care about. And does it have twin engines? I like to go fishing oh, 30 to 70 miles offshore. You want to have two engines on that boat. It's a long swim back. Enough about that, though. So this was the cruise of Jericho. Drink in the bonus, baby. Baby. And oh my god, this shows, with the exception of one match, I'll rant and rave about soon. This was an amazing show, folks. If you ever get a chance to see AEW Live, or even if it's on TV, um, minus the women's division, because they suck, um, I highly suggest you do so. It's different. The action's really good. It's that nice hybrid between an indie wrestling show where it's spot, 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 spot. Maybe finish spot, 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 false finish. Dive, dive, spot, spot, dive, dive, spot, spot, dive, spot, finish. And the WWE headlock mania and rest hold mania. So it's that, to me, it's a nice balance. Again, with the exception of the women's division. Women, it's terrible. They're, I don't know, they're just. They they don't know what to do with their women. I uh, they they they're, they're terrible, terrible, terrible. To quote Le Champion, who drinks of the bubble. So I know on this cruise, if you got the Chris Jericho wrestling package, actually in your cabin was a bottle of Chris Jericho's bottle of the bubble. That'd be cool. You show up to your cabin, there's a bottle of champagne waiting for you. That's cool. Then you get to see the wrestling show, and I'll tell you what. The thing I'm beginning to enjoy most for some reason about AEW is the fan base. Wow, are they a weird bunch of people. In this show, we saw La Blue Girl. We saw Ninja Turtle. And we even saw Jesus. Yes. They, they, they saw Jesus. And a Ninja Turtle. And some fat bastard guy who, who wouldn't sit down. Boo! You're that wrestling fan, the one wrestling fan in the front row that never sits down. So everyone else behind you has to stand up and watch. Boo. FPOS. Boo. Be kicked off that boat. The nearest Caribbean I have to wrangle sea turtles to get home or something. Whatever Jack Sparrow had to do to get home. But enough about that. Um, so the show starts off amazingly with SCU taking on wah, 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 wah. Hey, hey. Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega. And wow, this was amazing. I mean, they could have had this really on any pay per view or as a main event for anything because of that cowboy shit. That Hangman Adam Page does. I mean, this was amazing. Classic match start. Frankie Kazarian. Oh. Hyper combo. He does the combo strikes. That's great. Scorpion Sky. Woo. With those chops. Uh, uh, so they were beating up Hangman Adam Page for a while. Uh, he gets to tag in Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega takes control. I'll tell you what. He did the Rough Rider. Wait a second. Kenny Omega stealing moves from Zack Ryder? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Who knows? Again, good tag team work back and forth between SEU and, and uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page. Uh, for the most part, Hangman was the one taking most of the bumps, though. Although, and of course, Kenny Omega got yanked off the apron, and there was very little space between the barricade and the apron. So I know there was one time, um, well, well, actually, after Kenny hit a fisherman's buster, or, yeah, Hangman Adam Page hit a fisherman's buster. 
But then he decided to go flying, and I guess the only way to get out of the ring was, like, if he got knocked out, like, you literally went over, like, the, the two feet of space and into the crowd, and Hangman and Page had, time to do my dive. And I think that was the fun thing about this show. There weren't that many dives out of the ring, so it made it feel more significant when a wrestler said, you know what, it's time to put my body on the line, do my Sope Suicido out of the ring. So with that, I mean, that was pretty good. Uh, there was a miscue by Page because he, once he did accidentally hit Kenny Omega with the buckshot lariat. Uh, there was a slingshot cutter onto the ramp. Oh, that was so good. I still, this could have main event. I don't, well, I know why it didn't main event, but wow, this could have been anything though. And this was just fun. Um, what else? Page has a top rope exploder suplex. The Tiger Driver. Whoa, thank you. Lion Mask for creating the, or Tiger Mask for creating the Tiger Driver. Kind of the safest looking cool moves ever. Because you're way so high up. And this kind of fall like less than a foot. Pretty good. And then they hit the SCU later. But what happened is Kenny was getting pinned by Kazarian for the SCU later. Hangman and Page came in, just started to shove Scorpion Sky, and they just piled on. So they broke up the pin that way. I like that. That's a very creative way to break up a pin. It's different. Uh, at least it wasn't a, a kick out in a no cell of SCU. Of SCU later. And then there was a buckshot lariat. And. Whoa, we have new champions, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page, our new AEW Tag Team Champs. Wow, that here, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's that's not bad. They held the belts about seven months. Or yeah, yeah, for the most part. I think it's, they said it was was it seven months? I forget. I forget when they had a tag team tournament. That's not bad though. I mean if you're only going to change belts every so often, always fun to see it change on TV. And then Hangman Page went all cowboy shit with us folks. Uh he started crowd surfing. Um fans would give him beer. I think he took a bottle of Jack Daniels or some other Bourbonish liquor and started to drink that while crowd surfing. Hangman Adam Page. Cowboy Hangman Adam Page is the best Adam Page. And I didn't even realize crowd surfing was still a thing, but that was so cool. He was like drinking beer while crowd surfing. It was just cool. This match, it blew my mind. I'm like, whoa. This is a filet mignon match. I'll tell you what, because of the quality of matches, very little filler. Uh, seemed to be really good, well paced. I think even I think I think when I said, "Wow, it's been two hours already. The show's over." Like Farron's like, "Yeah." So what happens when you're having fun? When, when you're enjoying it, and it's, it's not a not a three hour long slog. Oh, this next man. Um, we had Priscilla Kelly take on Britt Baker. Um, Britt Baker still looks checked out. Uh, for those of you that don't know this, Britt Baker is actually the girlfriend of Adam Cole, baby! Any chance I get to say Adam Cole, baby! I will. Uh, that, and she's also a dentist here, I think, in Winter Park, Florida. She actually is a dentist. She did go to dental school. I think, I don't know if it's true or not, but she's only been, like, literally wrestling for, like, no, it hasn't been longer than that. No. Yeah. It's less than a year that she's been wrestling, though. But if I was a dentist, I'd be like, not getting in that ring. I'd probably lose my teeth. Like It's an old old story. I think I, one day I kissed a girl who actually had a tongue ring on, and it was right before tongue rings became like the new thing. I still don't understand it. But but her, her tongue stud hit my tooth, and I swear to God, I almost bit her tongue off. 
Because that scared the living bejesus out of me. Right? Because because these are all original chiclets, folks. And I I work hard to keep them that way. And I, f I felt and heard that clang of metal on tooth. Eh, eh, not happening. You hit the bricks, hon. Hit the bricks. Because that's not happening. Um, but then Priscilla Kelly, of course, is the, inf in is the infamous taking her tampon out and stuffing it into another woman's mouth. Disgusting. Would have been cool to see it happen here, though. But it's TV, folks. You almost knew it wasn't going to happen, but you never know. A shoot could happen. I think a shoot did happen. And oh, I'll, I'll mention that a little bit towards the end, too. In this match, the most part, is a uh, classic wrestling match. Nothing special. Uh, Priscilla, I think, is a little bit better than Britt Baker. I don't know. Britt Baker has the worst sling blade ever. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. They're just not, they're just not good, though. And it's, it's not even the fact that it's bad. I've seen bad matches. Bad matches can be some of the most entertaining matches ever. I've seen good matches that are highly entertaining. This is just that boring match. It's like, I think I was more focused saying, I want Love Blue Girl to get into the wrestling ring. I want to see La Blue Girl versus Ninja, versus Ninja Turtle with Jesus as a referee. That would have been better, I think. Um, it was okay. Britt Baker won. It was a can of soup. And to let you guys in on the business, when it's a shoot, it's real. When it's a work, Fake. Because I know I think people have asked, it's like, well, what's the work? What's the shoot? Uh, so, work is when it's an angle. It's something within kayfabe. Kayfabe is kind of a made up term that talks about wrestling while, while being wrestlers. Uh, the shoot part is when it's actually real. When, when wrestlers shoot on each other, they're really stiff. They actually punch each other or kick each other or they say very bad things. Mainly, your mom's a whore about each other, and they actually mean it. Which is not necessarily good because I'll say what Brick Baker went went to like shoot on Tony Schiavone about him being a barista at at Starbucks. Whoa! Wait a second, Brick Baker. He has to tranquil a little bit because she's very quickly going to be stuck on a boat in the middle of nowhere. Oh, how does that song go? She's going to be on that island where, where no one knows unless you've already been there. The place you can't find unless you're, like, lost. Yeah, that's not good. She's, I don't know. She just has, like, checked out face. E even J even JR is like, I don't know if it was a shoot or a work. Because even mainly by JR's tone, it's like, okay, we're done here. Whoa, and then Fight TV went to commercial? Fight TV never goes to commercial. Whoa. And then, like, Britt Baker started to curse a little, like, like, and you can see Tony, you can see Tony Schiavone be like, yeah, Tony Schiavone dropped the F-bomb, folks. That's not good. It's like, the fuck did you say? Like, I wanted to see, I wanted to see what happened on, I want to see what happened, because I, I wanted to see Tony Schiavone just, like, bitch slap her. Whoa. That was not good. Then we have a whole Jungle Boy promo. And then the Jurassic Express came, came out. And because uh, they were going to in a six man tag action, it was Jurassic Express. It's um, Luchasaurus, who's awesome. Jungle Boy Jack Evan. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. And Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt had on his little, like, like, little. Kitty life jacket. And they were taking on Santana Ortiz. And then Le Champion came out. And people were just singing his song. It was his Fozzie song. Actually, the one Fozzie song I'm on the radio is actually pretty good. I'm going to have to do a karaoke of it for, for my two year show. 
Um, so with this, it was fun. Again, I thought it would be hard to top that first match. I mean, it's so much easier to top that second match because that match sucked. But again, there was a Mexican arm drag. That's always fun. Again, they use Marco's son as a weapon. <laughs> and let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, Jake Hagar is huge. Jake Hagar is funny because he's a heel, but he's like going around the ring like high, 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 high fiving fans. That was pretty cool. Um, and that. So the crowd just wanted to take over. Uh, so, someone got a free souvenir because eventually Marco Stunt realized he, he can't wrestle that effectively in a life jacket, so he threw it out. Someone got a free life jacket. Good for that person. Uh, Lucius Soros. Oh, that kick, though. That headbutt. Uh, the second round side Russian leg sweep by Jungle Boy was awesome. Uh, but then Jungle Boy got caught. He goes in, in a... The suplex by Santana. So it's a delayed suplex. Santana held him up. Ortiz, they, they, they pass him off to Ortiz. And then even Chris Jericho. Whoa, I didn't know Chris Jericho could do that anymore. They had a, oh, what did I call it here? Let's see here. Um, the delayed, delayed trade off suplex. Yeah, that sounds about right. Although you could hear some, some spot calling. I think that's only because the mics literally had to be right next to the ringside. That was pretty cool. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad though. <laughs> then of course Ortiz had his planking headbutt where he just kind of like goes flat and stiff and like headbutts the guy in the chest. That's fun. Um, then <laughs> Lucius Soros hit the hit the shin to the face. Also known as the shiniest lizard. Whoa, that's creative because everyone knows there's only one person as the shiniest wizard, and that's of course Tegan Knox, also known as Nixon Newell. But now Luchasaurus has the shiniest lizard. I like that. Good job, AEW. Uh, then again, the headbutt, the double choke slam, and the standing moonsault. Dude, Luchasaurus is huge. If I try to stand moonsault, I break my neck. Marco Stunt eventually hit a 450 splash, and there was a series of near falls onto Chris Jericho. There's one Judas effect from Chris Jericho, and that just about killed Marco Stunt. <laughs> La Blue Girl was just so happy. And I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But I'll tell you what, this match, Santana Ortiz and Chris Jericho won. You know, it's, it's really hard to be the heel when you're the one that's actually sponsoring and putting up this show on a cruise boat. So Chris Jericho is the heel. But yet, everyone's cheering him, saying, Thank you, Chris Jericho. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And of course, the crowd was singing the song. That's Adulations. So again, that was kind of cool. Again, Jake Hagar was like high-fiving people. That was pretty cool. Even La Blue Girl got a high-five. That was, that was awesome. Awesome. You know what? For the most part, this was another filet mignon match. There was so little you could actually critique poorly. Marco Stunt, even though he is like smaller than Riho, the moves that he has fits his character. He's not trying to trade blows. He's trying to do high impact, flippy, flippy stuff that little kids can do, like flip around and do all that stuff. It makes sense. He's being used as a weapon. He can just be whipped around into people. I disagree a little bit with Jim Cornette. I can see where Mark. So next we have MJF coming out to ringside. <laughs> MJF, of course, he has his like huge ring. I might show you guys some of my collegiate rings, especially my undergraduate ring, which it's bigger but not as fancy as my doctoral ring, my master's ring, my high school ring, and eh, that's okay. But as so MJF. He's making people kiss his ring. I guess they're they're treating that almost like a minor title. But well, yeah. Then the crowd in the previous match they were chanting all that hair. I think the one thing that they'd have to do in the future, and they probably have absolutely no control over this. They were actually out at sea. They they were they weren't that far offshore. They 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 were probably moored offshore somewhere. 
or, or at least steaming against the current. But they were offshore. They, they weren't at, at, at dock. So you have the wind, because the wind was blowing the pyro everywhere. Every time the smoke machine went off, you could tell it like, got into their eyes and stuff, because they are like, oh. And it's not that it hurts. It's like that kind of more annoyance thing, like when you get an eyelash, just a little dust between your contact lens and your eye, or at least on the outside part of the contact and the inner part of your eyelid, you can feel it. It doesn't hurt, it's just annoying, with the exception of the sparklers, as the sparks were flying onto the poor announce table. And again, this was a really interesting crowd because we had La Blue Girl there. So the Ninja Turtle kissed the ring. I don't know why any grown adult would sh dress like a Ninja Turtle. I mean, he was, he had like a full beard too. So yeah, he was an adult. Um, La Blue Girl was probably the hottest girl in the crowd. She was there. So I think everyone in Discord was shocked and were like, whoa. What's that hot woman doing at a wrestling show? Normally, they're all skanky looking. Or they wear wrestling t shirts. No, she wore on a, a blue cover up, a blue bikini top, and she was awesome. And then, of course, we had Jesus show up. Some guy. Oh, wow. I broke out laughing for a good five minutes. Um, some guy actually had on a Jesus robe, a red stash. She had the hair going. I think if you've ever seen the movie... I want to say it's the greatest story ever told. But he looked just like that Jesus. <laughs> and MJF even saw him. <laughs> even MJF was shocked. He's like, what? He's like... MJF broke character. He was smiling when he saw that. It's the power of positivity, folks. Shine down on MJF for a moment. Um, and then, of course, he made other people kiss his ring. The Ninja Turtle kiss his ring. Some other fan was puckering up to kiss the ring. He like he just like tossed his hat somewhere. Then you can see his like security return the guy's hat. So it was it was kind of funny to see that. But uh, he was taking on Joey Janela. Uh, it was okay. It was a little okay match. Uh, a lot of trash talking by MGF. That's what he does. Um, oh, and there was so much cursing during this match. Whoa. And you can tell because it's on TNT. They had a very soft. Why you? Yeah, that's right. You piece up. You're like, whoa. They have the beep going on. Again, there was a, um, there wasn't a live feed because I think they did this. I think like earlier in the day. Maybe it wasn't live though, because there were spoilers out there. I didn't share any spoilers because that's just boo bad. Although I wonder that. You know, now I'm thinking about it, La Blue Girl was pretty hot. I mean, with the wrestling people, yeah, Priscilla Kelly is pretty hot. Like the devil's perfect streetwalker. Britt Baker was there. I wonder if Adam Cole had wrestled a match. You know what? With that bright red hair, Priscilla Kelly would have stood out. That was interesting. Her and the Blue Girl were the, the, the two hottest women there. They probably got hit on by every drunk guy there. Every drunk wrestler. <laughs> that has to be. A personal hell for those two women. Every drunk wrestling male was probably trying to buy them a glass of wine. Oh, wow. Another reason not to go on cruises. I think, I know there was one cruise where it was like a swing cruise. I think one of my classmates went on. Because she was like asking like all this, like, oh, this is this kind of cruise. And people were like, whoa. Yeah. And she was Canadian too. Boo, Canada. Never liked Canada, anyway. but that's my own personal bias. But again, this was um, pretty good. Again, pretty classic match here between MJF and Joey Janela. Again, there was a huge body backdrop because MJF had like a running start into Joey Janela, 
Joey Dillo back dropped him. That was pretty impressive. I, I like the fact that they have the ramp going up directly to the ring because you actually can get a lot of momentum. Uh, MJF, again, uses the ref as a shield. Poor Aubrey. Aubrey, he, MJF tried to get Aubrey to kiss the ring, and Aubrey's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> Which is funny. Aubrey's like, no selling it. <laughs> he knows she wants to just laugh. Uh, again, uh, there's uh, a standing moonsault, I think. Oh, no, standing senton. That's it. And then Kip see me and Penelope before we come out. And they start making out at the top of the ramp. Penelope before she had that little itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, blue and silver, French cut thong, mini triangle top bikini on. Well, no, it wasn't mini triangle top. But yeah, she had on a little bikini though. Folks, it was cold there too. So Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford started making out that's enough to distract Joey Janela because that was his former girlfriend. And he had a spike crossroads on to Joey Janela. MJF wins. This was an okay match. Nothing spectacular happened. But still, a good match. It's a good cheese. I think more of the antics that made it a cheeseburger match. And then Cody Rhodes comes down, and MJF's like, ah, remember, you can't touch me. And of course, as he went to go leave the ring, Cody Rhodes enters the ring, starts cutting a promo. MJF starts to leave, but he faces Cody all the way. He did not know, like my cat sneaking up behind me, that the Bucks of youth, the young Bucks, they're not part of the, the conditions. They can do whatever they want. Right, Chispa? Are you going to jump me? You can't jump me because I see you now. You can tell because she kind of snuck in that way. And, you know, there. No. <laughs> she doesn't like going on YouTube. She's she's camera shy. You know, so I'm in this chair. And when she sees me talking to my computer, she knows, wait a second. I've been on YouTube way too often. Come on. It's okay. There we go. Good, pretty kitty. Pretty kitty, oh, she's just getting smart. And I can't spin around all the way because, oh, I can't get her that way either. Oh, you probably saw her tail move over there. Yeah, you can see her little fuzzy tail in the shot. But uh, So the young bucks jump and Jeff toss them into the pool. So that was kind of funny. A little comic relief there. Saying, ah ha, we got you. Let's see her. I want to say, oh, oh. Come here. No. Uh, step too slow. And I didn't want to yank the cord. Because this is actually a pretty nice mic. Mine is like the cord length. I figured that snowball one day. That looks cool. It's also 44 bucks, which I don't have right now. And then in the main event of the evening, um, Chris Jericho comes out. People just want to sing a song. And I think the people were, were getting a little drunk and tipsy. The men were getting drunk and the women were getting tipsy because I think we had the Wednesday night shipping wars because, again, they were like, not moored, but they were just kind of leaving port. And, of course, boats do pass each other. <laughs> and you can hear the crowd say, say, your ship sucks. Your ship sucks. And it was kind of funny to hear that. They're like... Of course, every so often you hear the horn and stuff. Like, bah, bah. You're like, whoa, what's going on here? But, yeah, so they had the Wednesday night shipping wars. That was funny. And and, and what? And whoop, that trick. Uh, some guy's sign, I don't know. I don't know what that necessarily means. Someone just wanted to make a sign. I had a couple too many. But you know what? I'll just write this down. I'll get on TV and I'll be famous. I did that. Actually, I think whenever I've been near like TV, I've always been like hidden by something. That's okay. So Chris Jericho comes out to do additional commentary because the pay per view, the winner of this match, uh, February 29th, will face Le Champion, Chris Jericho. 
And so in this corner, we have the Bastard Pack. And in this corner, we have John Mox. And wow, this was amazing. Uh, Pac was just extra vicious. And Moxie still had his one eye all patched up. So he's just like cross facing there. You get Moxie down. Boom, cross face right to the eye. Cross face right to the eye. Vicious Taz, dare I say. Taz style cross faces. That was pretty cool. Uh, Chris Jericho's still going on the mic. He's selling the action. Um, and then, of course, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Because the barricade gets involved, and then he just starts to find the crowd. Um, they go up the top, and I'm like, oh, is there going to be some crazy spot into said pool from the second row? You never know. They're pro wrestlers. I think I've seen people get power bombed into pools. That kind of looks like fun. I think we used to, like, at the public pool, we used to, like, when I was a kid, we used to, like, suplex each other into the pool. Kind of fun, actually. Um, but no, uh, Pac actually, like, slid down the steps. That has to hurt, because they make those steps with, um, like, that grip tape, and they use, like, rubberized material, so that, that's, the, like, non-slip material. That ought to hurt if you don't do it right. Because they don't do the whole thing, they kind of do it, like, so if this is a step, so the step's, like, this big, like, the non-grip, the non-slip part will be, like, that much. So there's, like, a little edge here and a little edge here. That's not a slip. That, that is actually very slippery. But you have to hit that right or, or you're just, like, tearing flesh. Ugh. And have I ever done that? Yeah, it's happened to me before. I know my friend's boat kind of slipped and you kind of scraped flesh off. And it's, it doesn't it hurts. It stings more than it hurts. It's like, just like getting a raspberry. It's not fun. Strawberries, wherever, wherever you call them, it's like rug burn. Like if you, like, I'm trying to think, last time I tripped and fell on the rug, I think it's because of her, my cat. I was going somewhere, I saw that I stopped and did not stop. Or stopped awkwardly enough where I kind of fell. But she is, but, but she like saw me and said, huh? I'll go run away now. I'm going to look at the birds. As I'm there, I'm like, ah! I don't, I don't think it was either my knee. I think I was like barefoot. I think it was like my toe. Again, it's just annoying more than anything else. But, so that was pretty cool. And that was a bunch of cursing too. And you could hear beeps, or you could hear prolonged areas of silence between words, and you're like, oh, wait a second. Someone's saying something they shouldn't be. Uh, this stupid idiot chant came out. Ken, because John Moxley, you stupid idiot, just stay down. Uh, it was an inside out suplex by John Moxley. Then Pac hit a jawbreaker, and then he had an eyebreaker, which is a jawbreaker. Except for instead of putting the crown of his head under the jaw, he put the crown of his head right on Moxley's bad eye. To the eyebreaker. Good call by Chris Jericho. Uh, then there's just vicious, vicious New Japan style kicks to the eye. He, he learned that in Dragon Gate. They don't teach you how to do that in WWF or WWE. And he missed one black arrow because Moxley got his. He's up. It was a quick DDT. It was a superplex then into the brutalizer. Mox refused to give up. He eventually, I think, got to the rope, forced a break, and then, or, or I, no, he, he pushed off. No, that was Britt Baker. Boo, Britt Baker. Pushed off the rope. Um, Moxie just reversed into a pin. Pack, again, went right for the eyes again. Went for another black arrow. Missed. Uh, then John Moxley hit the paradigm shift. <laughs> and, and people started to say, say, thank you, Jesus. That was terrible. Again, if you're going to dress up like that, you better expect that. So again, I'll tell you what. This was another amazing match. I don't think I've ever done this, but this is another filet mignon match. So really, besides the MJF match, which was still very good, 
and the Britt Baker match was just god awful. I mean, I'll tell you what, this was a Finn Turf AEW show. And I really do hope that they do this again because it just seems like the wrestlers are having fun. The crowd is having a freaking blast. And that's good for business. Um, something Norwegian Cruise Lines, I think they said they were on the Pearl. Something they can market every so often. They will get people to pay thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to get on that cruise boat. They keep on adding stuff like this. It'll work for them. It'll work for everyone. Piles of money to everyone. So tomorrow, I have uh, two more shows to do this this week, at least. Uh, Thursday, I'm going to do a triple prediction show. I'll be predicting the NWA pay-per-view. You know, I can't see that's going to be Friday. Um, I'll be doing, because I'm working, I'll be doing the uh, When Worlds Collide predictions. Again, I can't see that because I'm working on Saturday. And then I'll do my Royal, Royal, Royal Rumble predictions, which I'll actually do a review show on Sunday. So again, I'd like to thank 